a video review of the Fuji Marriott Lake Yamanaka Hotel. I'm Chris, this is the Traveling Princess, and in this video, we're gonna show you everything you need to know if you're considering staying in this hotel. We're gonna show you around this room, we're gonna show you the property, we're gonna show you, we're not gonna show you the area around the hotel because there's nothing around the hotel except the lake and some stuff, but we're gonna show you the room and the common amenities. First, let's go ahead and start with the room. I'm gonna turn this light on. We are gonna start the room with the closet as the Traveling Princess would like to start with. Uh, they provide you katas in this room as a Japanese onsen hotel would and this is the kids yukata for her It's got little puppies and ducks and things like that on it. Very cute The adult ones are down here for OC girl and I and towels to go down to the public bath Oh and men's and women's bags to put those towels in uh, over there's kind of like some other nooks and crannies of closets over here I'm gonna show you the bed in the moment but since this is an onsen hotel I want to show you into the bathroom because uh, there's something very interesting in here and it's not the toilet it's the in-room hot spring bath so this is onsen water in this bathtub in the room and so if you're worried about like having to be naked with other people you don't if you come in here is it warm is it hot yeah it's pretty warm and it just it just kind of runs out there so this isn't like you can't change the temperature. It's just that hot spring water coming in here, which is pretty nice. And I usually think glass in the rooms is kind of weird, but I think it works in here because um, of the, just the nature of that hot spring thing. All right, let me show you the room on the other side of this glass. So it's got two big beds in the room. These are kind of like, they call them twin size beds, but they're maybe more like full size beds. Uh, this thing turns into a sofa bed. There's a nice table over here. Um, the roof, the ceiling is, is slanted. This is on the fourth floor, so this is room 404. Top floor, it kind of curves down this way, which is unusual in hotels. Uh, the window does open. It's nice, so we're... It's, that's the problem with working with child actors. You never know what they're gonna do. We might have fed her a little too much sugar before, but let me tell you, she loves hotels, so... Uh, let me show you in this right here. There's a refrigerator down here uh, that's got a lot of stuff in it. And this stuff, um, some of it we bought, but then some of it are the titanium welcome amenities. When we checked in, they let us pick like as many drinks as we want and, and some snacks. And then what's the snacks? They let us pick these snack boxes. Instead of a lounge, uh, they let us get these boxes of snacks back to our room. So there's like edamame, soybeans, there's like some tofu, there's like some meatballs. There's what looks like heart-shaped marshmallows and a bag of M&Ms in a box. And we could pick as many of these boxes as we wanted. Um, I got two because I didn't know what was in them. I don't know that I'm gonna get any more. It's kind of weird. But uh, the free beer, free apple juice, free orange juice is nice. Flat panel television and um, no ice machine, but you can call to have it brought to you. Now that we've seen everything around the room, let's take a look around the hotel. Uh, the hotel is a four-story building. As you walk in the main entrance, you come into the lobby, a pretty big open lobby. There's a little seating area over to the left, a few seats in the middle, and then there's the breakfast buffet restaurant. A pretty good breakfast buffet, I will add. We'll talk more about the breakfast buffet as we get to the review section of the hotel. Down in basement level one, there are two ping pong tables and then there's a fitness center really quite small I just think it's there so they can say they have a fitness center the public baths are on the second floor this is the hot spring onsen can't really show it to you because men can't women have to take off their clothes to go in there but it is there on the second floor the hotel itself is really kind of in the middle of nowhere I mean it's near Lake Yamanaka but it's uh, a few 10 minute drive away from the lake itself there's really not much around the hotel and frankly if you're coming to it at night it's actually a little bit of a creepy drive so i would say definitely try to arrive here during the day oh and the good news is if you are driving a car uh, plenty of free parking in the self-parking lot on both sides of the hotel all right explorers if you watch our hotel reviews regularly you'll know now it's time for the tofer review where we rate hotels on a scale of one to five tofers and so tofers joined us to Tell us how many tofers this hotel gets. And this hotel is gonna get four tofers. All right, so let's talk about the pros and the cons of why this hotel got four tofers. First pro, the view of Mount Fuji out the window is amazing. Uh, and I get that only half the rooms have that view, but if you get a room with that view, 
that's really amazing. Also, I mean, this is about this room that we had. If you get a room that has the onsen in it or you book one, that's pretty amazing too because you can just use it right here in your room and you don't have to go downstairs to the hot spring down there. Now, I know this isn't a hot spring hotel. This is a Marriott hotel that I think uh, the hot spring is incidental to it. So the in-room one is pretty nice. The location is really quite nice in the Fuji Five Lakes region. Um, it's not really near anything. And so I haven't really entered the cons yet, but around location where it's nice to be close to the Five Lakes, it's a con that it's not really near the main touristy part of the Fuji Five Lakes. And so you'll be spending probably 30 minutes of transit time from this hotel driving to pretty much get anywhere. I, I would not come here if you're public transit, taxi, whatever, like you really need to have a car or become an, as part of a tour group to come to this hotel. Uh, other pros, great English speaking staff. So if you're worried about coming to rural Japan and having a language barrier, you won't have it at all at this hotel. The room itself was big, plenty of room. It was clean. Um, the staff was friendly, helpful. Every time we asked for anything from the front desk, it was like up in the room in like two or three minutes. And so that was quite nice. We also really enjoyed the breakfast buffet as Titanium members, that was complimentary. It was a really good breakfast um, Japanese Western spread that had a lot of Japanese foods, a lot of great Western foods. Um, and now I definitely think if you aren't a Marriott Elite member, you should book a room rate that has breakfast or just plan to pay for it if you like to eat breakfast because there's no other options around this hotel other than a 7-Eleven close by. And I think that's nice. I'll be right back. Hello. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And yep, as I said, there's the bucket of ice. I called like five minutes ago and it's already here in the room. No ice machines on the floors, but they do have vending machines that have like drinks. Um, and there's also guest laundry if you need to do like coin laundry on the second floor. Uh, weird though, these ice buckets, they don't have lids. Maybe they overfill them and they, they put saran wrap over them. That's the first time I've had an ice bucket with saran wrap. But just like thinking about this hotel, it was clearly something else before it was a Marriott. Like it doesn't feel like it was built to be a Marriott. It definitely feels like it was built to be a Japanese hotel and then turned into a Marriott later. I'd say the business here is 50-50 um, Japanese and 50 Western people who were looking for the Marriott experience. And in that, I think they deliver it pretty, pretty well. So uh, now let's talk about the cons as the things that maybe they don't deliver all that well. Um, first, the, the heating and the air conditioning. Uh, I don't know what's going on in this room, and frankly, it's what goes on in a lot of Japanese hotels, that it's just, it's just hot. It's really hot. It doesn't matter what we set that thing to. It was just really hot. And maybe it's because we have the hot spring bath in the room that always has hot water in it that just makes the room hot. Um, so a pro is we can open the window, which is really nice. I really like we can open the window. Con is, um, you know, at some point when the sun comes up, you gotta close the curtains and then you don't get a lot of cold air in through there either. Um, the other con, just the fact that the location doesn't have anything really walkable around it. Like, and when I say not anything, it's, I mean, I'm not just exaggerating that there's like not much around the hotel. There's like literally nothing from the hotel. You, you can't walk to go anywhere from here. Um, and then the hot spring, you know, while it has one, like the in-room ones are nice, but the public bath ones, I feel like, um, you know, it's more like a, a hotel has a swimming pool so that they can check it off a list or the hotel has a fitness center so they can check it off a list. I feel like that's what the hot spring bath feels like here. And having just stayed at two really nice hot spring hotels that were like really well maintained and really well stocked, the hot spring baths, the public ones here, felt like they weren't really cared or loved for all that much. And frankly, maybe a little bit on the um, not as clean side as I would have liked. I mean, maybe not dirty, but just really felt like some more attention could be placed on those baths. But really don't let that location deter you. I mean, I think the location being away from the tourist hustle and bustle is a bit of a pro. You know, you and Mount Fuji can just kind of have a commune with nature. Um, it does feel like a nice mountain hideaway to get into um, and, just, and just chillax in a nice room with plenty of space. Oh, and then on a final note, we did uh, end up like redecorating the room where that like sofa bed, we pushed it up against one of the beds so uh, my daughter could sleep like right next to me on that bed. And we, they brought extra blankets and they didn't charge us any extra money. I say that because the last two hotels we stayed at on our trip in Japan, uh, Hoshino Resorts, to make a third bed, and I don't mean like 
put a new third bed in the room. I mean, like rooms that had three mattresses in them already, they would cover up one of them and then charge you 5,000 yen to make it into a bed. Uh, and so it was nice that Mara didn't charge us any extra money and she had uh, plenty of room to sleep on, as did I, as did Osigo in the room. And I think the room itself was pretty um, kid-friendly, so was the hotel. Uh, and um, when we asked for a uh, um, child yukata, there's another one they brought up uh, three minutes later. I didn't explain this, did I? These are the yukatas that you wear to go down to the hot spring baths. And what is kind of, this is like this Japanese Western thing that in onsen hotels, you generally wear this around the whole property. Um, but when you check in here, they tell you, please only wear your yukata in your room or when you go to the bath. Please do not wear it when you go to breakfast. We would like you to wear normal clothes when you go to breakfast. And I think it's this like thing about they're like trying to make breakfast classy so you're not in your pajamas, but I don't know. I don't I don't feel these pajamas are unclassy. But hey, that's just, who else is gonna see you at breakfast anyway? All right. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy watching some of my other hotel reviews of the region. Um, the two I mentioned before that were the hot spring hotels, you can check those out. I will also have a whole vlog about visiting the Fuji Five Lakes region. If you want to know what to do here, you'll find uh, many more in the description below in my full uh, Japan playlist. And as usual, fellow explorers, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.